What does an 8,000 year old skeleton tell us about the first people of the Americas and where they came from? You might be surprised. Over 8,000 years ago, a Native American hunter was buried with care, wrapped in woven fabric and laid in a fetal position beneath the surface of a Florida pond. Yet, Windover Burial 44, a man in his 30s or 40s, had not died peacefully. A bone projectile point, sharpened, light and meant to fly, had pierced his lower back, embedding itself deep into the sacrum. It never left his body. There was no sign of healing. He had died almost instantly, struck from behind, and his people had laid him to rest, with the reverence shown to over 160 others at the Windover archaeological site, dated to roughly 8,000 years ago. On the other side of the continent, at nearly the same moment in time, another man also died and was laid to rest. Kennewick Man, discovered in Washington State, lived 8,500 years ago and bore the trace of an ancient stone-tipped weapon lodged in his hip. His wound had partially healed, he survived his injury. And like Burial 44, his DNA told a story of deep American roots. Kennewick Man carried DNA haplogroup X2A, a rare lineage also found at Windover among the ancient dead. Though separated by thousands of miles, these two men were genetic cousins, each part of a network of early Native American populations that had spread from Beringia to the Great Lakes to the Florida swamps. Yet their shared ancestry reached even deeper. In Vero Beach, Florida, just 70 miles south of Windover, another man lived 4,000 years before either of them in a world still occupied by mammoths. Known today as Vero Man, his bones were discovered alongside extinct Ice Age fauna, anchoring human presence in Florida to at least 13,000 years ago. And then a fossil bone found nearby added stunning context. Etched upon its surface was the unmistakable image of a mammoth, scratched by human hands in the last days of the Pleistocene. This is the oldest known art in North America, a ghostly carving that speaks of memory, reverence, and deep time. Between the mammoth hunters of Vero Beach, the ritual pond burials of Windover Bog, and the wandering tribes of the Columbia Plateau, we find not isolated stories, but a 12,000-year continuum of survival and ancestry. Burial 44 died from a prehistoric projectile, but his bones preserve a life rooted in tradition, kinship, and the great human journey across the American continent. His killer may be lost to time, but his lineage and culture still whisper through the wetlands of Florida, and the genetic legacy he shares with others across the continent still flows in living veins today. The whispers are loud at the Windover archaeological site, where the marshy waters preserve something even more intimate, the flesh and bones of ancestors. Among them was Burial 44, a middle-aged man with a bone projectile still embedded in his lower spine. His murder, frozen in time beneath layers of peat, offers a glimpse not only into a prehistoric world, but into the daily life, genetic legacy, and ancient endurance of the earliest Floridians. In the arc between the mammoth carver of Vero Beach and the slain man of Windover, we trace nearly 5,000 years of Florida's human past, from the last mammoths to the first complex mortuary traditions. He was about 35 to 45 years old, a tall man by the standards of his day, standing around 5 feet 9 inches, 175 centimeters. His bones showed signs of wear, from years of walking barefoot across the sandy ridges and wetlands of prehistoric Florida, and perhaps from carrying the weight of hunted game or children on his shoulders. But it was a single, fatal wound that tells us most about his final moment, which was unlikely to have been accidental. A bone projectile point, made from sharpened elk or deer antler or bone, had struck him from behind and is the type of point used with an atlatl or spear thrower. It entered the sacrum, the thick, triangular bone at the base of the spine, and embedded itself so deeply that it was still lodged there when he was excavated nearly 8,000 years later. Forensic analysis revealed no signs of healing. He had not lived long after the blow. He had died suddenly, perhaps even collapsing where he stood, the shock of trauma spreading like electricity up his spine. Tellingly, his community did not abandon him. He was carefully wrapped in a woven textile and laid in a flexed, fetal position, submerged in the dark waters of what is now called the Windover Pond. 
This was not a careless disposal. It was ritual, repeated for over a hundred individuals buried in similar fashion. Whoever killed him may have been an outsider. The people who buried him were not. Windover Bog dates to approximately 7,500 to 8,000 years ago, in the heart of the Middle Archaic period. Sea levels were still rising from their Ice Age lows, but the coastline was much farther east than it is today. At that time, Windover was inland, surrounded by freshwater springs, oak hammocks, and pine flatwoods. The people of Windover lived as semi-sedentary hunter-gatherers. Their tools were made of bone, antler, and shell, not stone. Florida's geology left few options for flint or chert. But they were ingenious. At Windover, archaeologists uncovered wooden throwing sticks, bone awls, atlatl components, and the oldest textile fragments in the Western Hemisphere, woven from cabbage palm fibers. Burial 44 lived in a world where community and ritual were deeply ingrained. Bodies were buried with care, often with grave goods. Some were laid to rest with gourds as containers, others with bone pins, suggesting personal ornamentation or status. The presence of multiple elderly individuals, some with healed fractures and arthritis, indicates social support, a community that cared for its vulnerable. He would have spent his days hunting small game, white-tailed deer, raccoons, turtles, even snakes, and fishing with weirs or traps in shallow streams. Botanical analysis of the site shows they consumed nuts, berries, and aquatic plants like water lilies and cattails. The population was well-nourished, with a high-protein diet suited to their environment. And yet, life was not without danger, as the wound in Burial 44's back reminds us. So far, the DNA results from Windover show 25 to 30 percent of individuals have haplogroup X2AT a lineage found almost exclusively in Native Americans and most frequently in the Great Lakes and Eastern Woodlands populations. Haplogroup C1, a Pan-American lineage found from Alaska to Patagonia, was found in the other remains, while haplogroup B and D were not present at all. These genetic lineages link Burial 44 and his community to the earliest migrations into the Americas via Beringia before 15,000 years ago. The presence of X2A is especially significant. It is absent in Asia, suggesting either early diversification within North America or a migration from a now lost population somewhere in central Eurasia. Though we do not yet have Burial 44's individual DNA sequence, it is highly probable, based on the burial cluster and sex, that he carried one of these ancient maternal lineages. Nearly 5,000 years before Burial 44 was struck down, Another man walked the lands near the modern town of Vero Beach. In 1915, human bones were found in direct association with the remains of extinct Pleistocene megafauna, mastodons, ground sloths, and saber-toothed cats. After decades of controversy, recent analysis confirmed that Vero Beach Man dates to 11,000 to 13,000 years ago, making him one of the oldest confirmed humans in the United States. Though no DNA has yet been recovered from the Vero Beach remains, the association with extinct animals and with the Vero Beach mammoth carving cements the region's role as a continuous centre of human habitation since the last Ice Age. That mammoth carving, etched onto fossil bone and stylistically consistent with Ice Age art, is widely considered genuine and more than 12,000 years old. Could Burial 44 be the descendant? five millennia later, of the mammoth hunters of Vero Beach? Almost certainly. While they lived in very different worlds, one amid megafauna and glacial retreat, the other in rising swamps, the genetic lineages, geographic proximity, and archaeological continuity support a deep ancestral link. If Vero Beach Man were tested and found to carry DNA haplogroup X or C, it would complete the circle. At the time of European contact, the region once inhabited by Windover people was home to the Ais tribe, coastal hunter-gatherers who lived along the Indian River Lagoon. Spanish records describe them as expert fishers and canoe-makers, with a society based not on farming, but on coastal foraging, much like their ancestors. To the north were the Timucua, a widespread people with complex chiefdoms, and to the west, the Apalachi, who had taken up agriculture and mound-building. But the eyes remained non-agricultural, 
living in villages, burying their dead in sand mounds. While there is no direct written record linking the Sisi tribes to the Windover burials, the archaeological record supports cultural continuity. The absence of farming, the emphasis on aquatic resources, the use of shell tools and burials near water sources all mirror what we see at Windover. The genetic lineages found at Windover, particularly X2A, persist today in Great Lakes tribes, including the Ojibwe, suggesting that eastern woodland populations were part of this vast, ancient web. When a small piece of bone was pulled from a private collection in Vero Beach, Florida, it was quietly thrust into scientific controversy. Etched upon its fossilized surface was what appeared to be the image of a mammoth, its curved tusks rising above a large elephantine trunk scratched by human hands onto the bone of a long extinct creature. The Vero Beach mammoth carving, dated to over 12,000 years ago, shook assumptions about the depth of human history in the southeastern United States. Proven to be authentic, it was not only the oldest known art in North America, but the voice of a forgotten people whispering through ivory and mud. The Vero Beach, Mammoth Carving and Windover Burial Bookend, a critical chapter in the human history of the Americas. The mammoth hunter at Vero Beach carved a memory into bone, a ghostly image of a vanished world. Centuries later, the people of Windover buried their slain brother beneath the dark water, wrapping his body in cloth, his spine still pierced by a spearhead. Together they tell a story not of isolated events, but of continuity, adaptation and identity. For over 12,000 years, humans thrived in the shifting ecosystems of Florida, from Ice Age grasslands to archaic wetlands to colonial contact. Burial 44's life and death reflect not only the fragility of human survival, but the power of collective memory, preserved in the ground, in our genes, and in art scratched into the ancient past. Thank you for watching.